So System76, those guys behind a fairly niche PC brand, but probably more notably PopOS, are reportedly working on a new project. So the current PopOS desktop environment is called Cosmic. Now, Cosmic is basically just GNOME with some tweaks, some custom extensions, and some custom theming. But at its core, it is still just GNOME. But a lot of the core developers have been very very outspoken about both GNOME and Ubuntu, and it was sort of only a matter of time until they decide to actually do something new. And that something new is basically just saying, screw it, we've made all of this software specifically for PopOS, why don't we just get rid of GNOME and make something new? So recently over on the PopOS subreddit, someone asked, will PopOS ever do an officially KDE flavor or will it forever be GNOME only? Would you like PopOS to do a KDE flavor? And then they had a poll here. And the desktop engineer, MM Stick, said it will be its own desktop. Will the DE be forked from GNOME? No, it is our own thing written in Rust. So MM Stick is Michael Murphy. He is a mod on this subreddit, but far, far more importantly, he is a System76 engineer and also a maintainer on PopOS. So what he says about this sort of holds a lot of weight. Now, this wasn't here when I did my original planning, but someone asked him if we can expect to see this in other distros' repos, or if this is just going to be a PopOS thing. And he says, this is one of the primary reasons we want to go this route. Easier to get distribution support for a native platform than a GNOME extended platform that can lag behind GNOME releases. So, if you were to build this basically just as a GNOME extension, and that GNOME extension relied on, I don't know, whatever the latest version of GNOME is, is it 40? Something like that. And then you want to go and put it on a distro that doesn't have GNOME 40 available yet, well, you can't exactly do that. But if it's all one bundled package, it's not reliant on some other piece of software, well, now you can just put it wherever you're allowed to put it. Now, obviously, that's not the only reason why they're doing this. You wouldn't build an entire new desktop environment just to do that. So some of the intentions they have with this project is to make it significantly more stable over the GNOME shell, make it be much lighter on system resources because, you know, GNOME is not exactly known for being lightweight. They also want to use a more modern software architecture and make it more configurable out of the box. Now, we don't exactly know what any of that's going to mean because the project, while it is in the planning stages from what we know, it isn't available publicly. Now, when talking about stability, I think one of the things he's getting at is in this comment right here, where he basically says the existing Cosmic Desktop is just a massive collection of GNOME shell extensions, and every time the GNOME shell is updated, all of them just break, have to be fixed to make them work with the new version. Maybe they break in unexpected ways, and this just provides a really complex platform to work with and isn't something you can really rely on. Now, every desktop environment is built around a specific GUI toolkit, whether it's GTK, QT, Flutter, whatever else you want to use. But in the case of PopOS, it's not actually going to be changing from what they already use because all of the PopOS applications are already being built in GTK RS. This is basically Rust bindings for GTK. That's probably what they're going to be doing for the foreseeable future until there is a Rust GUI toolkit that is mature enough for them to actually feel like it's worth using. MM6 does refer to a couple in here like 60fps, iced, and orb, t and orb tk, and says they are progressing nicely, but at this stage, GTK is the direction they are going. They will also be pushing forward with Wayland support, but due to issues that still exist with NVIDIA drivers, which are getting better, going Wayland only really just isn't viable at this stage. Maybe at some point, 10 years in the future, but at this stage, X11 is almost certainly going to be supported as well. And as for how it's going to look, just go and look at the existing Cosmic Desktop and you'll already see exactly how it's going to look. What they're going to be doing is visually cloning it, which in my mind, isn't a bad thing. There's no point completely redesigning something that you feel like already works well enough, you just don't like the back end. 
A funny thing I've been seeing is people treating this like it's some weird, crazy new direction or coming completely out of nowhere. But in reality, it's what Populous has been doing for at least a couple of years now. So, as I said earlier, building a lot of their tools out of Rust, as you build more and more tools, at some point you realize that you've built all of the tools you need and you've effectively built a desktop environment anyway, as of last year, they were hiring a lot of Rust developers and they've got a Rust development job open literally right now. And the principal engineer of Pop OS, Jeremy Soller, also has another project. That project is Redox OS. And Redox OS is a Unix-like system written in Rust with a Rust desktop. So the fact that Pop OS is also doing this shouldn't surprise anyone. I feel like the only reason why this was allowed to be confirmed now was because the project was some ways along. Not just, hey, we've written it up on the whiteboard, that's a thing we want to do in the future, but at least having some level of planning, knowing, you know, how we want to build it, how we're going to structure it, things like this, even if the development effort hasn't actually been started yet. And recently there's been some friction between PopOS and GNOME. It's not just PopOS, a lot of the other distros that rely on GNOME also have been having some problems here with the changes that are happening to theming and customization. It's not really certain what the future is going to actually be like for these other distros that rely on it. So rather than waiting until, you know, everything collapses around you, it's probably better to start working on something and move away before it becomes an absolute train wreck. Plus, from what I hear, working with the GNOME project and GNOME developers isn't exactly a, what's the nice way to put this, a, a positive experience where the direction that people who are actually using GNOME want it to go is really going to be taken. It's more like, this is the place we want to take the project to and that's what we're going to do. So I can totally get why being a downstream project to that can be a bit frustrating and you might want to just say screw it and do your own thing. Now the reason why I mentioned Ubuntu earlier is a few months back, Jeremy Sola posted this over on Twitter saying, would you use a rolling release pop OS? And 68.5% of people said yes. So there is clearly some murmuring, some thinking about, hey, Maybe we don't want to be based on Ubuntu anymore. Maybe we want to be based on Fedora or maybe Arch or even just straight Debian and keep it as a fixed, stable, point, static, whatever sort of release you want to call it. Obviously, nothing has changed with Pop OS. It is still based on Ubuntu and it's probably going to be like that for the foreseeable future. But it may not be at some point. Now, even if they did go full rolling release, it wouldn't be as up to date as something like Arch. It would be more like a delayed rolling release so they would still have time to do all of their QA testing and make sure it's as stable as they can make it be. While there are certainly concerns that I've expressed countless times about the existing rolling releases, I do think that you can make it work with enough effort. But I don't think that if you made Pop OS basically just Manjaro or Endeavor, that would at all be a good idea. While we don't know much about this specific desktop, what we do know is that every single desktop environment starts off with the exact same problems. It's not as big of a deal in Cosmic's case because a lot of the software they're using is already written for the new desktop environment, but one of the problems it's going to have is finding desktop environment specific solutions, whether that's things like changing your theming or installing extensions or having extensions existing. All of this stuff is going to be a bit of a problem for the first adopters. So maybe for like the first update or the first two updates, finding those resources is going to be a bit more of a challenge than it otherwise would be. There will also be a severe lack of software built around the desktop environment. So they mentioned things like customizability. So that'll be things like theming and extensions. And, you know, when something first gets created, there's not exactly many extensions. Those will come with time, but the first adopters are basically going to have to use the vanilla experience unless they are developers themselves. 
And also, no matter how much you QA test stuff and make sure it's as good as you think it's going to be, the second you give your software to users, they're going to break it. They're going to find something wrong with it, and there is going to be teething issues that do need to be resolved. While you can certainly argue that more desktop environments means more fragmentation of the Linux desktop, and usually I would completely agree, but in this case, I don't think this is really as new as it might first seem. So the existing cosmic environment for PopOS is already effectively its own desktop environment anyway. It is so far removed from what GNOME is in the first place that all this new desktop environment really is, is replacing the GNOME backend, but keeping the same general desktop environment. Take, for example, uh, Cinnamon, which started as a GNOME fork and then eventually became its own thing. So all that's really happening is replacing the existing fragmentation with equal but slightly different fragmentation. The only thing you can say where this does make the desktop more fragmented is now the GNOME related solutions will no longer work in the new cosmic desktop environment. While I don't run PopOS myself, I can very much appreciate what they are doing for desktop Linux. I don't think that PopOS is just marketing hype. It's not growing massively in the Steam hardware surveys just because people keep hearing about it. I think the reason why it's growing is because System76 is actually building a genuinely good product. They're listening to community feedback and trying to make it better because of it. I know I have some big, uh, big, big Rust, Rust fans in my comments, we'll call you guys. So let me know what you think about the new Rust desktop environment and whether this is a good direction for PopOS or you think that now System76 should burn to the ground because they refuse to acknowledge your god, that being C. So if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go to my Patreon, subscribe to only Barapay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically everywhere where I screw up my recordings and lose two hours of progress. I've got a gaming channel called Brother Robinson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or six YouTube shorts, and this channel is available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.